Welcome to the tutorial of it on Twine 2.3. In this video, I'm going to discuss story history as part of the Sugarcube 2.28. Sometimes, as authors, we want to know if a player has seen a certain passage, has visited a passage multiple times, or if the current passage is a certain name. These are all ways of accessing the story history. Sometimes we want to know different things about how the player has progressed through the story we've created and if they've seen or if they've visited certain passages. There are three common functions that can help us with some of those tasks. The function has visited, visited, and passage can help us with this. They allow us to look into the history of the story itself, how the player is progressing, and allows us to do different comparisons, different tests, to see if certain passages have been visited, if they've been visited multiple times, and to check to see what the name of the current passage is. The function has visited returns true if a player has visited a named passage before or not. This is important because it gives us access to the story history. So we need to know if a player has progressed through a certain passage, if they had viewed certain material or visited a certain spot. And there are different ways of thinking through how passages can exist within a story. They can be places, they can be moments in time, and they can be scenes, or they can be something else entirely. But the way we think about them can help us in how we're using has visited. For example, if we want to see if a player has received a certain amount of exposition, maybe by getting a certain amount of dialogue, we can use has visited to test for that, if a player has seen that material, or if a player has visited a certain scene in another context where our passages are actually places within the story. We can check, has the player visited this location? And we can use that then to do something. And the function has visited gives us that functionality. So we see here the first test. Yep, we have visited the start passage. And I'll look at the code momentarily when we get through this. But has visited gives us a chance to check to see, looking at the story history, if a player has visited a certain passage or not. Sometimes we want to know if a player has visited certain passages multiple times. Coming back to the idea of passages as places within a story, sometimes we want to know if a player has come back to a place multiple times. For example, maybe they're not quite getting a clue, or we're seeing them come back in the same cycles again and again. And maybe we want to do something about that, either supply them with a clue, or maybe cue some dialogue to do something. The has visited function allows us to do that. So it's similar to, or the function visited allows us to, in a similar way, work to has visited. That is, visited returns the number, and has visited returns true or false. I got this a little bit confused momentarily. <laughs> With the function visited gives us the number. Again, coming back to the idea, we want to know if a player is returning to multiple locations, if we're using passages as locations, or is coming back to clues again and again, if we're using passages as exposition or dialogue, or isn't quite getting something. These can be very useful for clue system. So we can use the function visited similar to the function has visited. Has visited returns true or false. Visited returns the number of times a passage has been visited. In this case, we see one. And in fact, I was testing for the start passage. Finally, the passage function returns the name of the current passage. This may seem a little bit silly, but in very complex stories, it is often not quite sure where the player is within a certain location. And so sometimes we want to say, hey, if the player is in this certain location as they're progressing through various paths and complex connections between these passages, we want to do something about that. Or we want to react in a certain way. The passage function just returns the name of the current passage and allows us to do that. We can then react. For example, if the player is visiting something like a swamp and a complex story, and we want to then do something if this is the first time they have visited the swamp, combining multiple uses of these functions. We can use has visited with passage to check to see, hey, is a current passage named swamp? Hey, have they come here before? And then we can do something and react a certain way. Maybe give them some exposition, some dialogue, or change some variables, depending on what we want to do with our story. So let's go look at the code for all of this. For has visited, notice we just do a simple test. Has visited, and then the name of a passage. In this case, start and this would return true. So the expression, the test is true, and then we saw the result, yep, we visited the start passage. So has visited gives us a true or false result to test to see if a player has visited a certain named passage. Visited, as I got confused earlier, 
gives us the number of times the player has visited a certain passage. Again, thinking about we want to act, react to exposition or dialogue or just check to see if a player keeps visiting certain things, we can check that number and then do something. Maybe they need to go through a door a certain number of times or something like that. And that would give us the ability to keep track of that information. Notice because this is a function, I have to use this within a print macro to give the result. We can't just leave this within a passage. It won't be called. So because this is a function, we have to use it within another macro to get its result. So we see print visited. So the number of times we visited start was in one as we progress through this example. Finally, the passage function we see is similar to right here. We can see if passage is and then the name we want to test. So this we test the name in quotations passage, which is a little bit weird, but we can also do it. And we are in fact looking at the passage named passage. So the passage function returns the name of the current passage. So three of these functions has visited, true or false, if a player has visited a passage or not, visited the number of times they had visited a certain named passage, and passage, the name of the current passage, all allows us a look into the story history. That is, the player's story history. As they're progressing through the story, we can look at different things. Have they visited this location before? Have they gotten this information through has visited? What is the number of times they've gotten this information or the number of times they've walked through a door or gone to a certain location using the visited function or finally using the passage function, the name of the current passage, allow us to check different things if a player has visited a location or gotten certain information and combining these can create a very complex clue system if we want to clue the player into something they're maybe not getting or to test to see locations, exposition, dialogue. There are a number of different ways to approach all of these but the three of these has visited, visited, and passage give us a glimpse into the story history. Thanks for watching.